a yeah. chap I used to, I did it with years ago at a company called Telewest, which eventually became Virgin, said to me one day that having a session with me was like being hit over the head with a boxing glove filled with glitter. Do you know, I bet which you're I thought was this. lovely. I think everything about you <laughs> screams that you're the ideal guy for this type of thing. That's very kind of you to say so. Yeah. Hello, it's uh, Stephen Englander again. It's um, Between the Spreadsheets, and today I've got with me Barry. Barry's an expert in all sorts of things, um, all sorts of things to do with business and education and everything else. So we're quite privileged to have him on the um, show today. He Hello, Barry. Hi. Um, you, know, you know, Barry, I was looking at your website uh, before, and I've, I've got to say, this is the, um, the Polkadot Consulting website. Yeah. And I've got to say, I think it was one of the most intriguing and intelligent websites I've ever I've ever read mm -hmm. and um, I'm certainly going to come to some of your um, podcasts and some <laughs> of your because you do some courses don't you we, we do we do uh, that's very nice of you first off to say that and also it's very nice to be here ah, thank you. so um, after lockdown oh, thank goodness we yeah. can actually do something yeah. so it's great to actually see people which is yeah. lovely we do we do various things there's a number of streams that come under polka dot consultants um, banner if you will it's quite it was quite intellectual as well well, I'm, I'm a teacher by profession, right? Um, so education is in my blood. Yes. And we've been going the wrong way for a very long time on that one. So it's probably about time we reversed it. Well, I, I, I do. I do find these massive gaps with um, small businesses in, in what they need to know. A lot of small businesses, they run on instinct. Absolutely. And, um, they, they, that's great to get a business going. Mm. But then when we want to sort of grow the business, we need to start looking much more at infrastructure. I mean, my, my approach to infrastructure is to say, get a CRM system like Salesforce, and we can begin to put some sort of um, um, infrastructure in place. Mm. But you, you, you're not looking at things like Salesforce. We don't, no. We go much deeper than that. Well, what we're looking for is how you're going to define yourself culturally. So if you're an organization that is 15 strong, for argument's yeah. sake, and you want to grow to 40. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a tall order. It is. Um, even when you've got the money coming in. So you might have the business, right, it's coming. But to f effectively get that to 40 and to be able to do what you say you're going to do with that business yeah. is a different ballgame altogether. Yeah. So I'm looking much more at are we, uh, how are we recruiting? What is, what is the framework that the organization looks like in terms of skills, knowledge, and ability? Are we recruiting people in the right way and from the right places to ensure that they're able to be autonomous yeah. in what they do because staff employees there you see this this is this is the thing with, with with staff i mean i know a lot of people i know we were talking before about the the amount of entrepreneurs that get to a certain stage mm -hmm. um it's like i think i mentioned my father before that he he's run businesses over the years he making bags and wholesaling bags and he's he's reached a stage with a lot of them where he's grown beyond his his knowledge base where he's very good at making the bags very mm. good at selling the bags but then when it comes to a certain level he's got to let go of these these sort of areas and concentrate on managing the business which invariably means managing people and that's when the grey hair starts, and that's when yeah. when you lose. I think I think one of your your uh, podcasts was talking about uh, how how to get beyond that. Would get, I mean, getting beyond that is a matter of choosing to. That's the first thing, and the difficulty yeah. is the entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, is not necessarily the one that's the best one no. to continue with the journey yeah. once you've got to ten well, employees exactly or fifteen. So. Getting past that, yeah. I mean, you do have to get special advice. You need to get somebody who has an idea of what they're yeah. doing in terms of growth. Because it's almost like letting go, isn't it? It's almost like saying, this is now no longer my baby that I want to go and mm. serve my cups of tea yeah. or my, my beer mm. or I want to manufacture or, or make my pies. It's now a case of, right, okay, that's the product. It's a process now. It's a product number now. That's right. And we've now got to manage the people who are going to now do that for you. And I think that that's very, very difficult. It's it's incredibly hard to get it right. Because you interview people a lot of the time based on instinct, don't you? Family, well, friends. Or I mean, that's that's that. where the other side of the business comes in. So yeah. we've, we've got, we also do equality, diversity and inclusion, which I'm sure oh, you, some you of you will have heard about. This is something that... Um, it's not our usual business topic, but it's becoming so. It's a new thing, it's, isn't it? it it's certainly really moving understand. out from uh, corporate and academia and starting yeah. to interact more. Well, um, start off with telling me this about the new policies coming in with it's, was it EDI? Well, equality, diversity, and inclusion in some cases, what we're beginning well, what, to see. What does that mean? First of all, it means, uh, from my perspective and from the perspective of our projects that we do, which is the EDI Jester project, which is for. Right. 
MDs and, and senior managers within business, okay. is that equality of opportunity is very important, diversity of thought is very important, mm -hmm. and um, inclusivity in action. Well, this is so why I got about, confused before, because I know you were explaining it to me, and it's still not clear in my head. We've got opportunity... Equality, equality of opportunity. Equality of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what, what's that? That's essentially saying that you put in place the procedures as you grow yeah. that mean that you're not employing somebody by your gut instinct, which yeah. most people as entrepreneurs do in the beginning because that's what you need. Yeah. You employ people based upon a specific skill set that's got nothing to do with anything other than whether they can do the job. Right. Well, so you seems, might need... It seems reasonable. Well, it is reasonable. I mean, yeah. you, you end up in a situation where you might not even like the person. Yeah. Which is not rare because the person that's likely to be able to do the bit that comes next well yeah. is probably a personality that's likely to clash with the entrepreneur. Well, of course, the wife teams. <laughs> that, yeah, well, yes. I mean, that... It, it, you, I think sister and brother was should, one of the best I go, ever did. Should we go past that little comment? Let's, yeah. We'll go, yeah, just, yeah, let's not do that. So, so, so this is equality from race, sexual orientation. Yeah, it's the protected characteristics. Age. Yeah. Um, there's actually no difference allowed. People are people no matter That's what right. Are. I mean, and it's, you're yeah. essentially, you're recruiting for the role. Yeah. The person, although it matters if they culturally fit, that's a separate yeah. thing altogether what the role should be is this is what the skills needed for the role are this is what you have to demonstrate that you've got them you'll so get the job there's going to be some sort of policy that has to be put in place yes. as part of every business's that's right working contracts and yeah. policies and whatever yeah probably on the website probably in it in would be it would be on the website it would be built into your recruitment structures yeah. and it would also influence anything you did from that point yeah. forward so what, what was the other one where you've got equality or opportunity equality of outcome of, yeah, yeah, that's a different ballgame altogether. We I don't necessarily want that. No. So, so just, equality of outcome would mean, for example, that if you were doing a degree, just for argument's sake, from an educational yeah. perspective, because I, obviously I deal with that as well, um, is that you'd end up with a situation where you'd have 100 surgeons would qualify, but they all had a degree. You wouldn't know whether they had a first, a second, a third, how good they were, how good they weren't. So it's about flattening yeah. what you would see as the traditional yeah. um, outcomes where people can sometimes do better than others. So, so, so really... It's, it's pass or fail, succeed or don't. Yes. But the bars won't be set that high. No, it won't, because so, they want to include everybody. So now what would be a normal degrade yeah. could just be a pass along those with an That's interest. right. So when you turn to your surgeon, when you're about yeah. to have surgery, and you say, were you the best in your class? Yeah. No, but I was the right sex, or I was yeah. gay, so therefore they chose me. You get a lot of this kind of identity politics around this that can be difficult because people yeah. want equality of outcome. Well, I'd happy choose my surgeon on that basis. Yeah. <laughs> if they were nice looking. If they were nice you know. looking. I mean, what Personally, I'll go with the top surgeon. surgeon. You know, just give yeah. me the top one. Yeah. It's, it's a really difficult one because then you get into the world of quotas and and things like that. The BBC's been renowned for well, doing even, this. Well, even in business, um, you, you know, it, it doesn't seem fair because it means you'll be paying the same sort of wages, expecting the same standard to somebody that you would normally want with an honours pass, to somebody that would traditionally be, you know, well, I've just about scraped through. That's right. Well, you wouldn't be able to tell that differentiation so at that, all. That's a bit... It's, 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 it's like this, this, this entitlement and these days that seems to be around everywhere. It's like, I, listen, I made a cup of tea and you liked it, so therefore I should be on the same wages as the managing director. Absolutely right. Yeah. Now, I'm not, you know, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm a great one for we've got a problem with a wage gap. And I yeah. do think we do have. Yeah. But it's, it's not wide enough. Is that what you mean? When, uh, yeah. Exactly the opposite. No. Oh, right. what, what yeah. I, so but people will be saying, well, we've got this gap and that gap and these people aren't paid as much as these people. Yeah. But they very rarely talk about it as a whole thing. Yeah. So they won't say, for example, what we need to do is bring everybody up. Yeah. It's they need to bring other people down. Yeah. So what you end up with is you've got to take it from somebody to give it to somebody else. Well, it's like, as the, the thing with Asda, you've got everybody, everybody in the company is on the same level. But that's not fair because some people, you know, the, the, the reasons why they're in management or they're in a more skilled job and some people are in a less skilled job. Why, why should they be all on the same wage rate? Well, it doesn't make any sense. And of course, it's no. not human. No. I mean, that's the other thing. So I, my, one of my friends who, was, um, who works in a, a private care home, for example, was quite interesting on that one. It wants to go into management. Hmm. Well, the pay rate is so small between management and there's no point. Well, yeah, all that extra you know, you get all the extra stress yeah. that we, you mentioned about, you know, yeah. when you're managing employees. Yeah. So you really are, you're, you're in a situation whereby equality, diversity and inclusion is becoming much of a, a much yeah. bigger thing. People aren't seeing this all over the show and now. And the market is not allowed to decide who gets what anymore. No. Which seems to be a bit That's odd. It's a bit well. odd. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit. Well, I think there was an old thing about communist Russia years ago where they said, yeah. um, we pretend to work and they pretend to pay us. Yeah. So I think that you, you've got to be careful that what we end up with is but a situation. They did play, where, play a lot of chess. So well, yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. It was gymnastics and chess. Yeah. Yeah. I, so. so I just I don't I don't see how 
any business worth its salt would want to get, let that anywhere near what it's yeah. doing because then it would cause, and not only that, it caused rifts. Yeah. So, you know, very, very difficult. Coinbase was a very good example that I mentioned yeah. earlier. Yeah, you did. You know, where he said, we're not doing this. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not, we want to do this properly. And if you don't like it, here's an exit yeah. package. So and then, then you've got this, this, this equal. So just going back to this equal sort of everything and the policies mm. you've got to come in place, you put in place that that could prevent businesses from doing business with bigger companies because right. they're looking for these policies now. That's right. And I, I think a lot of small businesses, the, the, the it was like when, when we had the, um, the data protection um, stuff coming through. Yeah. They don't realize that it affects them and it takes longer to trickle through. Absolutely. E even your employment um, spread, it, you, there's always been the, you've, you've got to have, af after you've employed a certain amount of people, you've got to have a diversity split. You've got to have people from different cultures and backgrounds in there. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, but you have to, what, the, what they're really looking for is for policies and procedures that ensure that you're not treating anybody. Yeah any more fairly than you would treat anybody else because of something that comes under the protected characteristic, sex, yeah. marriage, pregnancy, yeah. everything else that comes with it, race. Oh, um, so that's confusing. what they're looking for. It is confusing, it seems confusing. I just want to run a business. Yeah, that's more and more difficult these days, I'm afraid. Yeah. So, so if from their perspective, if they're a small business and they're looking to grow, yeah. not building this in at the beginning will, will, will mean a lot more trouble so down what, the road. So what we've got so. here, um, obviously I'm not an expert on this type of thing, yeah. but you are. So if anybody would like to talk about the ED, ED I lead it and live it. And they or, feel that you're going to be affected with, to be honest with you, if you're employing more than five people, you probably are going it's to be gonna, At some point, it's going yeah. to so be on the if head. you'd like some help in drafting the policies yeah. or talking to someone for advice, they can contact you. They can give, yeah. They can, so, yeah, so just your, email your us. Your email yeah. will be coming up it, it will come on up. the screen and contact you direct. But yeah. as always, if, 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 if you don't, if you're a bit shy, um, T t talking direct to Barry, then you can contact me and I'll, I'll pass you details on. So, it's, but you, you don't just do these. This is not the only thing you're asking. No. Tell me about EDI Jester, because that seems like you're making fun of it. Well, it, I, if anything, if, if there's any, ever anything that needs a bit of satire, yeah. it is the world of equality, diversity and inclusion. Um, and it takes itself very seriously. Now, yeah. I, do, I do this stuff in higher education STEM subjects. Right. So What's a STEM subject? Science, technology, engineering, and okay. math. So this right. is particularly pertinent to science. It's quite highbrow. Well, many of your clients may well be in the technology market or the science market or engineering or, or, or yeah. even maths for that matter. Yeah. So, it, so what, what you're saying is what that I'm if, saying if is clients that are thick, don't, don't watch his podcast. <laughs> I don't want to characterise him like that. Okay. You may say that. <laughs> right, so I'm I've not going to I've never met a thick person in my life. No, no, yeah. no. Some are misguided. Well, there's time yet. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're back to Hannan's razor. I'm looking in the middle. Hannan's razor. Don't, yeah. don't, tell me that one. I like that. What Hannan's razor? Yeah. And never put down to malice what you can easily subscribe to stupidity. I think yeah. it goes or something yeah. like that. Guys, so, does that? Do you know? Does this fit with what your experiences? <laughs> <laughs> so you've you've got a we, we've got the EDI Jester program, which is really for MDs, and it would be MDs that want to understand a bit more about the depth of this equality, diversity and inclusion and how far it goes. It's a monthly programme which you sign up to. What do you mean by diversity? Well, diversity of thought from my perspective is so where it is begins. Like the thought police with 1984. Well, no, not at all. The other end of it is right. when they're saying to you, you've got to have three gay people. And I mean, you know, it's not that simplistic. Do they have to take a test? Who? Get gay people. If they want to come and work for you and you've got your quota right, you're gay, you're gay. What What are you looking at? I've no, that's the strangest thing about it. Nobody can tell me how that works. Right. It's really so, well, here's what we should be doing. I'm like, yeah. how? Yeah, but how, how, if you have someone from an interview, mm. how do you know if they're gay? Well, you don't. That's the whole point. So. Um, it seems a bit rude asking them. Well, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. if I could, you know, I mean, if I, imagine yeah. if I went for a job. Are you gay? Yes, dear. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay. Right, it's yeah. just what? So that, you know, it's you, you can have a situation whereby they're starting to look and say, well, actually, you know, this person doesn't achieve because they're the wrong colour, or this person yeah. doesn't achieve because they're female. Or this yeah. do and this happens all the time. I mean, the biggest underachievers in the country right now are young white males. Yeah. Right? Why, why is that? Um, they traditionally have been, if the truth right. be told. And I, we, we know that from the figures that come from the, from the National Office for National Is that Statistics. because you've got non-traditional uh, males, non-traditional uh, with people not white who do everything for the traditional white males. Um, no, no, no. I, I don't think the two are related. My, to be my, frank. my partner, she does everything for me. Yeah, well, there's, yeah, but that's a different thing altogether. But that's in, that's inveterate laziness, and I don't think that's oh, yeah. done by identity. No, she's not is lazy. It? She does it because you know she likes to. I love it. He's a quipster. Mm. Yeah. I'm the jester and you're the quipster. Thank you. So, <laughs> so the idea being that with the EDI jester program, what you've got is a um, a, an overview of how it goes wrong. But it's interesting. I've got um, 
Nick's just doing the first. You remember Nick you had on the other week? Nick from the. Um, he's standing for mayor. Standing for mayor. Yeah. He's doing the first module at the moment. Ah. Right. And I had some friends of mine, both of whom were lawyers, who did the first module three weeks ago. Right. And they loved it. Right. But it's about here's how to look differently. Mm. Because what you want in your organization, if you want to grow your organization, is you want to give everybody equality of opportunity, which is the ability well, it to. It makes sense that anyway. Yeah, it makes sense. Does make sense. You also want to be able to have a diversity of thought. Which I means that you've got to be. Don't quite well, it means that. that you can say what you think. Oh, I'd be locked up. Right. Yeah, but you know, it's about it's a matter of people being able to say, "Well, I think that would so I, I think that would work, oh, and that can wouldn't." You imagine how many people would be offended. Well, not necessarily. I think when you come when it comes to business, particularly small businesses, it's much more about them not being frightened to say, "Would this work?" Do you know? The other day, I, I had. Um I had a conversation with somebody and I felt like punching them, but the, you know, they might punch me back, so I didn't. But the, I, I was showing them something we were working on mm. and, and they started criticizing, oh, I don't think that's very good. And I said, well, why? Oh, I, I just don't like it. And, and I said, look, I'm not interested in what you're saying. Mm. I'm really, don't, don't give me your opinions. I'm really not interested. And they looked at me and I, what? And I said, look, if you're gonna give me an opinion uh, that's, that's saying that it's no good, then give me an alternative. Say, this is no good. Why do you do it that way? I can't stand listening to people that just say, that's no good. Well, this is, this is part of a larger malaise, should we say. Go on. Which is something that's known in cultural circles yeah. as the death of the expert, which is that everybody's opinion matters. What utter, I've never had such nonsense in all my born days. Oh, so you agree with me? I agree with you. Oh, right. Everybody's opinion does not matter. Imagine you go to the doctor and you say to the yeah. doctor, there's something wrong with my knee. Yeah. And he says, you've got you know, X, and you go, no, 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 it's Y. Uh, I mean, you yeah. just wouldn't do it, would you? Yeah, no. So you've got these people yeah. who, you know, spout stuff that they don't understand. And you're like, no, no, no. no. If you're going to have an opinion, for yeah. goodness sake, make it an informed one. Yeah. Because if it's not an informed one, yeah. then you well, I, I should be quiet. In my more arrogant days when I've been in a bad mood, it's like, I don't want your opinions, I want facts. Yeah. You know, I just, sometimes you just think, you ask people for a number and they tell you it's raining in Afghanistan. You know, I, I just... I despair, but we were mentioned before, you'll know more about it than, than me, but Socrates, he was eventually put to death. He because, was, by Hemlock. Yeah, mm. and he was, he was um, busy upsetting people because he was proving that they didn't know everything. So you'd, you'd get stonemasons in those days, or brickies, nothing wrong with being brickies, but they probably don't know much about the judicial system, yeah, yeah. giving opinions and telling people what to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like he, he used to ask them questions that proved that it contradicted them. He wasn't doing it to be vindictive. He just wanted them to realize that they were talking crap. There was something, there was something interesting about, um, about Socrates. I think he was a bit of a jester himself. Yeah, well, you, we don't, you get to that point where you either hate people, or you make fun of them. Yeah. yeah, live long enough to be a villain or see yourself become one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Socrates is a very interesting character to me. I mean, we don't know much about Socrates because no. all we know of him comes from Plato. From Plato, he never yeah. wrote anything, did he? But he had a wonderful thing called Socrates' triple filter. Yeah. Do you know Socrates' yeah. triple filter? I love this, and I use it all the time. I've got less friends because of it, but I, I shall pass it on <laughs> oh, to all you good I've, business I've people. I've got my personality for <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> I shall pass it on to all you good business people, which was Socrates was walking down the, the street one day in all his, you know, his flow, flowing robes with mm. things wrapped up under his arm, looking yeah. terribly studious. And his mate comes around. Did up he to come him. back from a wrestling match? I don't know where he'd been. <laughs> Didn't he used to be a wrestler? Socrates? Yeah. Did he really? I think so. Oh, I think they all were Plato was, anyway. They used to all do that, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. Yes, they did, not they? Yeah. So he comes, he's walking down through the through, through the through the forum, and his mate comes up to says, "Here, Socrates." He says, "He's from the West Country, this chap." Yeah. He says, "Here, Socrates." Yeah. He says, um, "You've have you heard what's happened to Caecilius?" Socrates said, "What? Have you heard what's happened to Caecilius?" No, I haven't. What? Do I, wait a second. Hang on a minute. Before you tell me, I want you to pass my triple filter test. Okay. All right. Okay. What? What? How does that work? He said, "Well, first of all, is what you're about to tell me, do you know it to be true?" At which point his mate said, well, no, I bumped into Ben. Ben said the yeah. kike. Right, okay, so you failed the first one. Let's try the second one. Yeah. He said, is what you're about to tell me, do you know it to be a good thing? Hmm. Well, not really, no. What happened was, Kaikidis was in the sauna. Socrates said, hang on a minute. Right, he said, he said, and before I, we finish, my last one, you, you may get it on this. He said, you failed the first two. He said, tell me, is what you're about to tell me useful? Mm. At which point the guy said, not really. And Socrates <laughs> said, let me get this right. You're about to tell me something that you don't know is true, yeah. that isn't a good thing and isn't useful. Why are you telling me? Yeah. And we have a lot of people that do that oh, constantly. Fun. Well, I've got this guy, he, he, honestly, I can't stop listening to him. I said to him once, you know, if, if you get a plastic penis and, and glue it to your forehead, mm. you won't have to talk and people still know what you are.
That's rather wonderful. Yeah. Would you use that again? <laughs> no. Oh, OK. No, I, I just call people grievance gerbils. Grievance like, gerbils. Don't be a bloody grievance gerbil. I've had enough of you. Stop your wibbling. <laughs> That's it. So, you know, yeah. it's, I think it, it, the situation as it stands at the moment is, is that all the stuff that I'm dealing with right now is going to affect business. It doesn't matter what size yeah, you are. It is. Yeah. Because this, the problem is the supply line. If you're government in particular, mm. but if you're doing business with other organisations, um, then you're going to find that they're expecting to see certain things yep. from you. Yep. And one of those is to have the right procedures in place to ensure that you're not discriminating. Now, nobody can argue against that. No. You know, because I saw it years ago. I'd be sat with people who were learning recruitment and they'd be interviewing a woman. And the first thing they say to her is, are you going to have a child? It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Stop that. This it's discrimination. None of your damn business. It, it surprises me with businesses because businesses are about making money, about pushing mm. them forward. Mm. They've got... They've got other things going on. Any any other agenda is maybe we should look at closely before yeah, yeah. allowing them in business. But b being um, sort of like discriminatory is not in the interest of a business. No, not because at all. it you know if someone's black or Chinese or Jewish or or gay mm. or uh, whatever. Doesn't matter, does it? Well, no, it 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 doesn't matter. And in fact, to go against that is the most stupid business oh. thing. And, and I'm not, not that's now expensive. Well, I mean, the, f the the payouts from the courts but it are just, enormous. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, I mean I've, I've got to say that in many ways I feel very naive mm. because, we, I mean, we deal with thousands of people over the years and I've not come across very much racism or, or this type mm. of problem mm. because business owners tend to do what makes the business go forward. Absolutely. And, and I think maybe, maybe if there's a problem, it might come from middle management or, or management rather than the owners. Well, it, t it, tends to, it tends to foster itself quite well in HR. Yeah. So you can yeah. guarantee it's going to be there somewhere. Yeah. And they're, obviously they're there to help alleviate or is that it, kind is of it problem. Is it sort of like maybe someone's a bit inadequate and they use whatever they can to say, well, you've been, you're picking on me because I'm... Well, that can happen, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I've seen both. I've seen it so blatant you want to just... You can't understand why can anybody imagine. can be so nasty. Yeah. And I've seen it the other side, Brian, which is I can make a few bobber because I'm gay. Right, yeah. Right, so... But businesses need to be aware of the fact... That we're, we're not talking, oh, you know, give them four grand and they'll go away. Mm. It's in the hundreds of thousands. So is this insurance ready for this type of thing? Uh, I, I don't think they'd cover it. Right. But so you, you're talking about the business would have to pay it. Yeah. And that's if, it would put most businesses out. It would. Small businesses, businesses would be done. Contact your insurance companies and just see what's going on. It's very difficult to follow uh, the letter of the law, the letter of these policies. There's always an angle that if somebody wants to have a go at you, they'll find a way to have a go at you. I think the easiest way to think about this is is, is that you have to prove you weren't. Mm. Forget the idea that they have to prove you did. Right. right. If you think about it that way, then you make sure that you've got stuff in place to begin with. That if right. anything goes wrong, you can say, well, hang on a minute. Here's our policy. Here's our procedure. This is so what we say. So as long as you've got the paperwork in place. Doesn't guarantee. But no. if you want to minimise your, and you know as well as I do, you can never minimise all no. risk. No. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we could? All right. Stick your money on that share and we'll be fine. Yeah. Just going back to your training, I, I, I actually think that, that um, there is a massive lack of real hands-on business training. There's a lot of academic training. It's gone. Yeah. What, what, is, is, why, why is it gone? Why e can't we just Sorry? E-learning has replaced it. Yeah, it doesn't work. Or well, e-learning, as I call it, reading. Well, exactly. I'm reading <laughs> from a screen. <laughs> if you are going to do it, you'd do it anyway. I mean, what, one big problem that people have, a massive problem, is sales training. It's, it's understanding your customer. It's how to communicate with people. Yeah. And I know that's something that you, you're... I've done a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. I've done a lot of that in my time. That, yeah. So, so how are you, are you still doing that? I do. Look, so, the difficulty with sales training is, it's, A, it's expensive. Yeah. What, what um, do you call expensive? Well, I, it's, it's charged per head. Right. Because, yeah. because it's done on the basis that yeah. these people are going to go and earn you a fortune. Right. I'm trying to get people to do more in sales training. I'm trying to do more. So I want people to know now the sort of price range, the sort of investment they've got to make. Yeah, if you're looking, it would be very, very product specific. Yeah, so we're not going to hold you to this. No, but for example, I'll just, just give you an example. Ballpark, yeah. I was working with a, um, um, a, a firm that recycled Amazon's cardboard. Okay. And they were going out from Amazon and they were going to go and get other people to come in. So that yeah. was somebody who was doing a consultation that might last three or four weeks. Right. They'd have four or five visits with the individual. Now that's massively different yeah. from somebody walking in a shop and the shop owner going, right, oh, what are you looking for? Yes. So there's the two different types, right? Yes. So this type you've got, which would be a smaller business, I suppose, mm. you'd be looking at probably a two day course, which would mm. probably run at about 400 pound a head. Mm. That's a different ball game. That's probably going to be fully bespoke, mm. in which case you'd be looking at two to three grand a head.
So it's all about whether it's bespoke, what it is that you but need. This, this training sometimes with, especially sales training, is that you can have an initial, let's, everybody, this is what you've got to do. Mm. But it takes a while for it to sink in. Oh, right, so yeah. So you need refreshers. Well, so it's some, the coaching. Yeah. So you, you tend to it's do. It's the coaching. Yeah, it's the coaching. Better. Yeah. Coaching people. So you, to what you tend to do is if you're a small business, you'll have maybe two or three salespeople in your business. Yeah. Um, and then you would have them go on a basic sales skills course so they can get yeah. the idea. But then you would go for some reflective practice with the person that provided it, which yeah. might be me or, or, or one of my Or even manage chance. them, not manage them, but coach them in day-to-day -day activities. That's right. So yeah. they can learn to be self-reflective about what they do. Yeah. Now, when I was selling and I sold for years, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you still do. If you run your own business, you're always selling. It was that, it was the drive in the car. Mm -hmm. like, what did I do? What did I say? Yeah. Did, I, did I actually say that? Was that right? Could I have said this? Yeah, what right. would have changed? Yeah. What would I have done differently? So from a business perspective, you're trying to get into your business, mm -hmm. that kind of thinking. Yeah. And remember, we're now moving, whether you sell handbags, as you mentioned earlier, or whether you sell perhaps websites or whatever service it is you're giving, yeah. we're now moving from an, from an economy that was based upon atoms to an economy that's based upon bits, mm -hmm. right? So we're starting to sell more services than we are products. Yeah. Plus, we have a system that that's harder to sell to than it's ever been before. Mm. So selling has to be more consultative. It does. And just look at the coaching as well, where, when, when people replay the, tran the, the conversations. When they've got the transcript in their the, head, the, yeah. It tends to change to what actually happened. That's why sometimes when you actually listen to what was gone in the background, being nice and passive. Yeah, you, you can it, see it. You can say to them, no, this is what you are. That's how you saw what you were saying, but this is what was actually going on. Uh, it's, it's a really, that's a really interesting point because that touches on a process within organizational development, yeah. um, which is very much about um, what's called deutero learning, right? So, for example, you're a small company, you've got five yeah. people, right? Um, Bob over here does something well, and Ahmed is doing the same sort of job, but yeah. Bob hasn't told Ahmed. Right. Well, why not? Right. What's what stopped the business from being in a situation where the first thing Bob does is go over to Ammon and say, listen, try this. So that's that, that sort of basic due to that where yeah. we learn as you grow and get bigger. The organization has to start asking itself, how do I build an environment mm. in which Bob will automatically go and see Ahmed when something good happens yeah. or Mary will also you know, will pop over and see Ali or whatever it may be so yeah. that you've got a situation where the organization becomes a learning organization and yeah. creates what's called a community of practice. So you would go in and yeah. you would appraise the company and what's needed yes. and then yeah, put, put things in place. Yeah. And we, we could do some sort of um, payment plan. Well, that's how it works. We don't, nobody can afford it up front. No. Because it's usually, you take on a client that you're doing that with, it's usually a two or three year engagement. Yeah. This is not a short engagement. It needs to be. It, it needs to be. You need to become part of the team. I mean, the one that I do with the university on EDI is eight years. Wow. So that's a seriously long yeah, but, time. Yeah, but it needs to be. I mean, I, I would, if, if, if I found a consultancy firm that could come into me and, you know, engage with constant ongoing coaching mm. people that could engage with looking at every aspect of what the business yeah. does, you know, I'd, I'd want that person to be around forever. Yeah. Y you know. Yeah. So it's about it's about doing that. And we do it on stipend. It's the only way we yeah. do it. So we say, right, this is what it's going to cost. And, yeah. and this is what you pay. And this is the minimum period. Well, that's also another thing is, you know, it's when when these things tend to start, it's it's um, it's money going out, you know. It's, you're, right. you're not getting any yeah. justification for the money. No. But as things settle in, and productivity, and sales, and general well-being improves, uh, yeah, then you begin to see that there is an actual balance sheet increase, an actual. Well, that, loss I mean, that's what you're looking at. You, yeah. you're, you're it becomes measurable. Well, it, that's right. Unfortunately, it's not measurable at the beginning. No. There's no way you can but measure you can't. it. The only van, I mean, I've just had. We use Salesforce as as our management tool yeah. within the business. But there isn't the uptake on it that I'd like. You mean uh, from the staff themselves? From staff yeah. themselves, and and it's it's ma and it's mainly because they're busy doing other things, and they're accountants, so they have that mindset on the account software. That's not, interesting. Yeah, and so so I've I've just I've just sort of appointed a firm to automate a lot more of the procedures with coding, so I get the information I need with minimal input, but it's still not enough. It's nowhere near well, enough. Well, that's what you're doing there is your um, and. Many, many businesses will do this mm -hmm. because they seem to be the most important things, and they often are, yeah. which is you're dealing with the technical aspects of your business. Yeah. Now, what, will, what that's fine, yeah. but you can have the best running car in the world, yeah. but without a driver sat in the front seat, it's going nowhere. Well, at the moment. So, uh, well, at the moment, don't. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> they're teaching cars to run over less people. So yes. let's just, 
so <laughs> which we, is never a good thing. Which is never a good thing. <laughs> so what you what, what you experience essentially is that you tend to have we get the technical side can be right, mm. but it won't work because the behavioural side has yeah. been completely ignored. Yeah. So it's all very well you can have all the good stuff in the world, but if they go, no, I don't know. Yeah, no, we've got to get the mindsets, not, don't we? Right. So the mindset then yeah. becomes grab them by the and the minds and hearts will follow. Yep, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. And that's what you do, isn't it? Well, it's to, what I do to a certain degree, but I do it in a very nice way. Well, a yeah. chap I used to, I did it with years ago at a company called Telewest, which eventually became Virgin, said to me one day that having a session with me was like being hit over the head with a boxing glove filled with glitter. Do you know, I bet which you I thought was lovely. I think everything about you <laughs> screams that you're the ideal guy for this type of thing. That's very kind it, of you to does, say so, can it it does. Yeah. I'll talk to you after the show. Yeah, we yeah. can. Yeah, we can. Yeah. We'll manage Hayden. We can. <laughs> Hayden, we're coming to manage you. <laughs> so it's in, in essence what you're doing is saying yeah. to yourself i don't want to have to tell them to do that how do i create the culture and the environment means they will yes so it's not them you're changing it's your organization's culture and structure in order to get them to behave in the way that you want them to I don't and think you do that realize how important that is it's massively important it is. but it's also hard and it's especially hard for a small business yeah. because the mindset is I'm the owner. Yeah. I do everything. And if someone doesn't do it my way, there's the highway. I mean, the thing about being an entrepreneur, I've got a mate of mine who's an entrepreneur, and yeah. I refuse to talk to him about any of this because he makes his money from being how he is. And if I talk to him about this stuff, he'll stop being like that, and then he yeah. won't be able to make his money. Well, that, that's so that when you true. get bigger, yeah. then I'll talk to well, you. But that, 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 is, that is the whole mm. point of this, the, the, that smaller businesses have a certain mindset. Mm. And if they're happy being a smaller business, if they're happy making then a living, stay where you are. then that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. No, no. There, there, there isn't. I mean, there's lots of people that make money in, with them. Um, I mean, there's a new fad with them um, selling coffee from trucks, yes. from caravans yeah. and trucks and things. And that's great. And if you can make a living, you get what you want from it. That's great, but there are other people that with these trucks that are looking to franchise, they're looking to grow yeah. the business, they're looking. Yeah. But it all depends what you want. I, you, you know. I mean, that's what it is primarily. Yeah. I mean, it's about it's about getting everybody pointed in the right direction. Yeah. And it's it's a shame really that some of the skills that we have entrepreneurially yeah. are not necessarily the same skills as will drive the business forward once we get to five this, employees. This, this is what I've always found. Yeah. It, it's been something that's taken me a long time to learn that people like a lot of people like to stay where they are. Yeah, they do. Little hassle as possible. That's why my services are great. They're there's a little plug because we say just bang all your paper yeah, in a box. Stick it in a box and we'll you know, do it. Yeah. I, I think that's, but that's going to become uh, the way forward. And we have to be very careful about this because what we're seeing is automation enabling yeah. a lot of things. So when I was working for the DWP and Home Office, the home um, office. Yeah. What we right. do the home uh, office. I can't tell you. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Teach it. But it was it was leadership and stuff like okay. that. But I can't go into specifics, obviously. No, no, but no. It was, I used to love it. But uh, at that time, they were seeing automation arrive. Right. You know, and the DWP went from something like 160,000 employees to 75 in eight months. So you were the axe man. Um, I wasn't the axe man. I would come in and train the managers. But all the people that were at the bottom level, AI, which was yeah. essentially admin, gone i mean why would you pay four people to do something when you can click a button and the algorithm does it for you so we're see, we're seeing that you like those four people well there you yeah but then that's not a business it's a commune yeah, that's right so <laughs> so what would happen is people would be then reshuffled off to other parts of government and, and, and they did it entirely without having I mean, redundancies it was yeah, a brilliant they project just improved they just improved so, people yeah. so that was really good but you're beginning to see this happen now mm. what we have to be very careful of is you have to replace that void with something else mm. so what do you expect people to be? If, you're, if their job is going to be less about a process like that and more about people, yeah. what skills do they need and where are you going to get that from? Yeah. And can you teach somebody to lead? Mm. That's an interesting question. Yeah. Can you teach somebody mm -hmm. to lead? And what sales skills do X, Y, Z need? And actually, where does the selling stop? Yeah. You know, if you're a receptionist, you're selling, whether you like it or not. Mm. Because everything is about selling. It is. Right? It really is. You know, you have to sell the idea of anything to sell anyone. Yourself. You sell yourself. And particularly now, because now we live in a world where ideas are coming at us thick and fast, yeah. that we've almost lost free will. We now have free won't. I'm not engaging with that. I'm not engaging with that. This is so you. I'm not engaging with that. I'm not engaging with that. <laughs> right? So you've got this free won't going on, yeah. which means if we're not careful, we miss that which is in right, right in front of our nose. Yeah. So if you've got a really good idea, you best have the ability and the intellect and the nous to be able to make sure you get it in front of the right people. Oh, that's brilliant. Even if that means wearing a silly ass badge so they ask you what the badge is. I love that badge. Reminds me <laughs> I know, Bangle, let's go play in the garden. I remember. Can, can, can we see the uh, zippy badge here? The zippy badge? They can see the zippy badge. Well, 
after that, I've got nowhere to go. That's it. I think we're done, so aren't we? We're done. So I'd like to, well, we're not done, but we're done for this we're episode. Done for, yeah. But I want to thank you very much because I've learned so much from you today. <laughs> it's been great I, to see you. you. Know, it really, really, really has been fun. So um, everybody, thank you for joining me again. So we're coming to the close of another episode of Between the Spreadsheets with Stephen Englander. Um, um, all the relevant emails are coming up at the bottom. Don't, don't forget to go to YouTube and ring my bell so you can um, get notifications of future podcasts and everything. And um, Barry, thank you for very for, thank you for joining me. It's it's been it's great. It's great, great to come and see you. So maybe we'll come on again sometime. Yes, certainly. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you soon. Bye bye.